says Brie, I'm the only friend of Christy and Gypsies. I'm the only person allowed to speak for them. I'm <laughs> married to a man that's charged with a felony. Like, <laughs> you should update your bio, says Brie. Yeah. You should, says, you should put, I heart my felon boyfriend in my bio. Says Brie, who wants everyone <laughs> to believe that, like, she's the only voice for Gypsy Rose. I commit felonies from bed every day, but, like, you know, <laughs> she's not the problem or anything. <laughs> Jesus like, Christ. I Brie blocks every she does. Dude, I'm, okay, so I have like a lurking account and I went in to watch her live the other night and I was there for like five seconds and I'm like, okay, what would a not lurker do? So I like follow. Like I'm interested in what she's saying, like she's speaking my interest. And she immediately blocks me, like, damn, you think everybody's against you. Like, I think she's schizophrenic. It's like, <laughs> it's like Brie was the leaked combo planned by you and Christy. That's my belief. Um, yeah, that's what I was saying. Gypsy is winning if I start fighting with fancy. So I don't have any interest in fighting with fancy because it has nothing to do yeah, with that's exactly what Gypsy wants. Like she wants okay, me to fight with fancy. She wants me to always the one to spiral out of control. So she's go crazy first. I know how they are. Like anytime, like <laughs> Yeah, Brie was live a minute ago. I messaged you about that, Katie. I don't know if you saw that. Apparently, she was having a meltdown on live about me because I was on. Um... And like, I was on Ivy Rose's TikTok live like five seconds, and the comments were getting spammed by like 50 different fake accounts. Like, shut up, stop talking now. Like, people trying to silence me, and they kept blocking them. And then I guess says Brie went, like, Brie went live, and she was like having a meltdown about me being live with um, Ivory Rose Nose. Like, that like slid her over the edge, but I couldn't watch because, again, she's fucking schizophrenic and blocks anybody who looks at her account for more than five seconds. She's like, yeah. why do you want to listen to me talk? You must be a hater. Like, yes, obviously. Wait, I don't understand. Why does she not want anyone to listen to what she says if she has something to say? Because she doesn't actually have something to say, Katie. She's like, so basically, um, I, and, and, and so it kind of like, it was, it, it yeah, that's what happened. So obviously it was nothing. And it's just like, girl, what did you even just say? Like, what point did you just make that you're schizophrenic? Okay, let's be nice. Let's not mental health shame. No, she's so paranoid. She's paranoid that everybody who's watching her lives has ill intent towards her. I'm telling you, I think she's schizophrenic. She okay. thinks everybody has ill intent okay. towards her. Okay, no, let's not. Schizophrenia is a, is a mental health illness and like, let's not mental health shame so let's just okay, say i have a mental health illness and i was also that blind i'm just saying i'm just okay so let's instead say that not be let's not mental health shame let's say that she is sabotaging gypsy and she's paranoid and she has um stop insecure i just don't know like she's paranoid that everybody that's watching her live is like having ill intent with it like somebody was like like i've had 10 different people tell me that they scrolled in and immediately got blocked so like i was watching your video on instagram of her doing damage control and literally what she does Katie, is she goes so what we were talking about it's like it was just like it was like it wasn't even serious you guys like it was it was like no, it's, it's hypothetical so obviously you guys are just like making assumptions and she didn't even make a point so let's be like let's not bash her mental health like let's just say that what she's doing is gaslighting no i know what you mean i know what you mean i get it i'm sorry that's my bad i just like why don't you apologize to the chat and just say you're sorry i'm I mean, sorry y'all i'm just trying to figure out like what's got her so like worked up right now you know okay Everyone's good. Okay, she's she's apologized. All right. So what I was gonna say about Brie is that I'm gonna if it's her, I'm blocking her. <laughs> she has me blocked, so if she was in the chat. I wouldn't be able to see it. I'm blocking her. Okay. So what I'm gonna say about Brie is that Brie showed up in um, February or March, and she claims that she's been a longtime supporter of Gypsy and that she's been following for years and. She claims that she is the only one that's loyal, the only one that knows them, the only one that cares about them. She uses these very like us versus them kind of dialogue with Gypsy and Christy. And it's it's weird because when she showed up, Christy didn't really tell anyone about who she was. And even people that were like longtime friends of Christy's were like kind of trying to figure out what was going on because Brie was going on TikTok and just picking fights with everyone. Yeah. And it was like, it's one thing, like, that's not my, how I roll. I don't feel like I need to fight with other creators. It's just not my thing. I don't want to fight with other creators. And Brie was literally just picking fights with any and all creators about everything. And Gypsy was right behind her and doing whatever and probably instigating a lot of it. And I kept telling Christy, like, this isn't a good look. Like, this isn't a good look for Gypsy. It's not a good look for you. This isn't, why are you worrying about a couple people that don't agree with you or, or an online community that doesn't agree with you? Why aren't you focusing on the people that believe you and that support you. Why wouldn't you nurture that community instead of focusing your energy on the community that hates you? Like any PR strategist or, you know, any manager of anyone would tell them that like, if you, like, if you are a creator or an influencer, you really do. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I said something about morbid. And, but if you are like, a creator, like your audience is going to get turned off if all you're doing is like paying attention to the negative because they're going to be like, well, why are you, why do you care about the negative more than the positive? Like, don't you care about me over here supporting you? Right. And so if your audience sees that all you're doing is reacting to the negative and engaging in the negative, they're going to start looking at you like, oh, am I missing something about you? Like, right. am I, you know, like, what's the, <laughs> yeah, like if you give, thank you, chat, Chase, 
Chastity says, if you give attention to people who dislike you, that will take up all of your content. Yeah. Exactly. So it takes away from your goal of like spreading awareness. And I kept telling Gypsy, like you have a 10 million people on TikTok or whatever. Like, why are you worrying about uh, some creator with 5,000 followers or 10,000 followers? Like, do you understand like from like a numbers, like how much bigger you are than them? Like if you start going after them, it's going to look like you're bullying them, even if they're the ones that started it. Right. And well, I mean, it doesn't help with the way that she paints herself to be such a victim. You know what I mean? She paints herself to be such a victim. Anytime somebody speaks the truth, everybody immediately starts to like, they're like, oh, you're attacking her. And it's like, no, I'm just saying the truth. I'm just pointing out something. I'm just asking a question, but everybody immediately thinks you're attacking her because she paints herself to be such a victim. And see, what upsets me about that is that when people confront me, then they say that to me. Like when I was on that panel tonight, they were like, oh, you can't handle accountability. But, but you can. That's why you didn't want to be friends with them anymore is because you were tired of seeing a lack of accountability. But I don't want to have to be like, Here's the thing is like, for what? That's my question. I don't feel like I was the victim when it comes to the gypsy story. I feel like I definitely at times got stuff wrong. I definitely was misled and I definitely, I didn't flip flop. I just changed my opinion over time, but it's hard because I know what I was feeling behind the scenes. So I went, I want to say that like, it might appear like I'm flip-flopping to you, but I want you to know that behind the scenes, I wasn't agreeing with them. And I hadn't been agreeing with them for months. And so to the public, it looks like this was like a um, a fast break. And it feels like they're framing it like, well, Gypsy blocked you. And that's why. And the reason why Gypsy blocked me was because I think at that point, they knew that they could no longer control me. Like, they Well, absolutely. And I feel like we almost got disconnected from them at the same time. It's almost like they went on a spree of cutting off people that can no longer be controlled by them. They, they got sick of not being able to control everybody. So they got rid of us all. It's almost yeah. like they knew that I, but, and I was trying to explain this, like, on our live the other night, it was like, they used to allow feedback. Like they were, they used to be okay with that. Like Christy would always say to me, like, you can tell me anything. You don't have to like bite your tongue. You don't have to hold back. You can share your opinions. And so that's what I did. Um, and that used to be something they appreciated. They used to listen and thank you. Like that was helpful or whatever, like, because it wasn't like I was just sharing my opinion when they, unless they asked, you know, like I wasn't just walking in there and telling them what to do. If they, they asked for my opinion, I gave it. Um, or if I didn't agree with something, I shared that, but that was always how the relationship was until it wasn't. And then when I stopped agreeing with almost everything they were doing and I couldn't co-sign what was happening because what was happening was privately, they were not agreeing just like you guys, but publicly they were pretending like they were agreeing and publicly they were trying to go out and fight all of these claims when half of the time, the things they were fighting against were actually true. Now, some of the stuff they were fighting against were false. Yes. They were fighting against stories that were trolls or whatever, or just gossip. But some of the times they were spending a lot of their time and energy fighting against people that just didn't agree with the fact that Gypsy unalived someone. Right. It's like. Yeah, someone just said, Pamela said, Christy and Jeff blame and villainize everyone who doesn't stick with their narrative, period. Breeze on her live talking about how we're Delulu because Gypsy would have tested positive if she was pregnant for her nose job, but she would have been too early on to test positive. Wouldn't she? When did she get her yeah, nose job? You know, Gypsy even told me that she could have been pregnant then, and it is possible that she could have not tested positive then. I mean, Gypsy even told me that. Exactly. She literally said that herself. They're looking for any any way to dispute our claims, and it's just it's telling. It shows that you know what I mean. Our claims our claims are validated by their attempts to silence us, and I think people are starting to see that for sure. Do you miss your friendship with them? You know, I think it's easy for people to like look at Christy as like a monster and say that she's this evil person. But Christy wouldn't be good at manipulating people. She didn't make you feel like you mattered, right? So Christy was always very good at telling you, remembering your birthday, contacting you on holidays to say like, happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, happy Mother's Day. If she saw that I posted something and I was going through something, she would be one of the first people to reach out and just say like, I love you. Don't forget that I love you. You know, so... I don't think everything about Christy is bad. You know, I just think that like money changes people and the pursuit of money. Absolutely. I'm so sorry, Katie. It can infect people, you know, and like, no, no, Christy is bad. Follow the money. I'm so sorry, Katie. I feel so bad. And I hope you know that I love you very much and I value our friendship and I care about you. Even when you do hold me accountable, I still love you. <laughs> well, I'm like 20 years older than you, 24 years older than you. Yeah, that's kind of like my mom telling me to yeah. be in Like, yeah. say sorry to the panels, Zora. That yeah. was evil. I'm like, sorry, guys. Didn't mean it. Just mad. Well, I, think, I mean, I think if, if, if Christy is all evil, then, you know, maybe in time I will see that. But I'm, what I'm just saying to you is that, like... You need time. She, but if she is evil, what I'm saying is, like, she's a good manipulator then, right? Because she is remembering things. She is making you feel... Better important. than Gypsy ever was. 
Christy is more empathetic. I will, yeah. say, I will say that Christy actually does have empathy. Like, she's not cold hearted, as cold hearted as, as um, Gypsy. I can see that in her. Red coming. Yes. Thank you. Red coming. It's a good manipulation tactic for sure. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. That's what love bombing feels like. Yes, very much so. And that's going to take a while for you to kind of, you know what I mean, come to terms with. And you know what I mean? This is also recent still. And despite people thinking that, like, you know what I mean, something happens to you and immediately you're just like, all right, let's get the story out. You you have to go through a whole process of coping and coming to terms with these things before you can even report on them. You you want to cope with them and accept them and research them because you value the truth in your reporting skills. You know what I mean? And so well, I think I just, everybody's yeah. expecting you to just have everything figured out already. But really for you, it's it's a process of coming to terms with things and yeah, well, as you realize. Pamela says she's a good manipulator. I'm not denying that. Like I'm saying to you, like the reason why I was loyal to her was because she was a good manipulator, right? I'm not saying that I support her in any way right now because I don't. Um, I have been very clear that the very last episode, season of episode eight, was the moment that I knew that the Christie that I knew wasn't real. Because the Christie that was in episode eight and the way that she was speaking to her daughter Mia and the way that she was justifying breaking up a marriage and justifying Gypsy's bad behavior and enabling it was not the Christie that she was presenting to me. Um, to me, she was very not supportive of what Gypsy was doing, very critical, didn't agree with Gypsy, um, was almost walking on eggshells. So... Um, it's difficult because I feel like Christie's narcissistic and Gypsy's narcissistic. And so the two of them um, obviously butt heads. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think she's afraid of Gypsy. I think everyone. Can you guys give me some loves? Hit the taps. Taps. Taps my hearts. Give me some hearts. Give me some hearts. I don't need gifts. Just give me some hearts. I got you, Katie. Hold on. I'm spamming you. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. I sent you 88 likes. Thank you guys. I don't know why, I just like the hearts. Like, there's this little thing that goes up, and then they like, um... Okay, thank you guys. That made me happy for some reason. I love the hearts. The serotonin boost. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> no, you know what? I might be poor, but I can most definitely send you hearts. I got you. <laughs> I love the hearts. <laughs> I'm just gonna spam you with hearts whenever I'm in your life. So you're gonna like, okay. you see my life last night? I'm like, no, all I saw was my thumbs. <laughs> She's like, sorry, like, I'm so broke, but I can give you hearts. Like, thank you. I felt that in my phones. <laughs> like, I'm broke, but hearts are free. I'll do it. There you go. I love you, Katie. I hope that things get better soon. I don't know why Fancy's being such a B word. I think, like, maybe like Fancy what? feels like threatened or something. Like, I think she does. I was about to say, I think she feels threatened by how much you know because you know. Everybody else, all the other creators know a surface level amount of things, but Fancy's been the one that knows everything, but everybody's always known her to be a little, eh. but you are the one that's, you know what I mean? You're, you're clean cut. You're good at reporting things. You get the point across. You're not crazy about it. You don't throw out assumptions. You know what I mean? You, you're good at what you do and you know just as much, if not more than she does. I think she's threatened by you. Well, I think it's like, I think I told, I told her privately that like, there's a fundamental disagreement between her and I, and, 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 and that is she thinks that forcing Gypsy to sit in a wheelchair is not a big deal. And to me, I don't agree. Um, I think that is not good because it did impact Gypsy's leg muscles and it did cause muscle weakness and muscle atrophy. And to just try to say that Dee Dee was the perfect picture of perfection isn't fair and isn't accurate to the story. Um, but it doesn't justify what Gypsy did to her mother. Like it's, she, it's like, she wants to say that like she didn't fabricate things or actually cause any harm and that she wants to say that, well, it's no different than a child actor. It's no different than a, what she sat in a wheelchair and she got free stuff. She sat in a wheelchair and she got to go on free trips. I mean, that's not cool. Forcing your daughter to like do that so that you can get free stuff for them and then like teaching your child that stealing and shoplifting is right isn't good parenting. Not only that, but lying and conning people. Yeah. And like teaching your child a life of like deception and con. Gypsy knew about the con, but not her whole life. Like you can't put that on a child. You can't put that on a 10 year old child and say she knew at 10 years old. Like she's, being, so. she's being groomed and conditioned and trusting her parent, right? I think Fancy lets her hatred get in the way of being a good reporter on the subject and you don't do that. You don't have, you don't, you don't hate them. No. You don't hate them. You're hurt. You're, you're upset, but you don't hate them. And that's the difference. Her, her reporting is based on hate and yours is based on the facts and setting the record straight because you were manipulated and led to lie to so many oh, people. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't say Christy said it was okay. I meant Fancy. You're correct. Thank you, Chastity. Thank you, Chastity. Yeah, that's right. She was, oh, she, okay, she was, okay, but I want to just be clear about something. She was rewarded trips, but she was also, things from her life were taken from her. She didn't get a lot of experiences yeah, that other like, kids get to get, like Gypsy playing on the playground, jumping on yeah, the trampoline, Gypsy dealing with all of your friends. Gypsy never got to go to school. Gypsy never got to have friends outside of her mother. She was very isolated. Gypsy's mom cut them off from their whole family. When Gypsy, when Dee Dee passed away, some of her siblings hadn't talked to her in 16 years. 
And that's what I mean when I say Gypsy was mentally abused, but she was not a Munchausen's by proxy victim. I won't discredit the fact that she was mentally abused and she missed out on things, and I do hold a level, a level of sympathy for her for that, but she also lied about a lot of things, and she, she conned people. Yeah, so, so Fancy's position on all of that is that what Dee Dee did to Gypsy is no different than what a child actor goes through. Absolutely. Like, that's, that's what she said on Tasha K. Absolutely, so I have heard that, and that's not... So she's saying it was no different than what a child actor does. Excuse me, what a child actor works on a show, they know that they're working, right? They, that's generally something they enjoy doing. They like, learn a life skill and find something they enjoy, and Gypsy didn't get that. She, the only life skill she learned was how to master and manipulate people, and that's not a good life I'm skill. I'm not that's saying that child skill. actors don't go through it, but it's, like, don't get stuck on that. Well, yeah. Don't get stuck on that. They are often hurt, too, but, ch but Fancy's position is that none of them are hurt, okay? Fancy's position is that she lived a life of luxury. Yes. Was not abused at all, and I'm not yes. going to discredit everything. Correct. But she did. She did miss out on things. And her childhood was unfair. But was she medically abused? No. Did her mom poison her? Did her mom beat her with hangers? No. Was she given surgery she didn't need? No. She didn't have hundreds of surgeries. She wasn't poisoned by her mother. Um, like, but even if her childhood wasn't normal, and even if Dee Dee wasn't a good mom, it doesn't excuse her crime. Exactly. And when it comes to... What she did was inhumane. It right. was a level of a disturbance. And she isn't reformed. She didn't get the reformation she needed because she didn't put any work into reforming. She didn't serve her time. She just kind of sat in there and waited to get out. Yeah, she, 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 did, she, yeah she did the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. saying that I, I think Dee Dee did love her daughter to the, yeah. to the degree that she could love. You can see it. And I mean, and the evidence photos, you can see it in her bedroom. Is, she was very loved. But yeah. her mom was also... There was obviously something not right. I mean, to use your kid to run a con. I mean, to look at your kid as an opportunity to never have to work again. To see your kid okay. as an opportunity to go to Disneyland. Yeah. It's that's, sick. That's a mental illness, but yeah. it's not much other by proxy. No, but it's it doesn't, like, making somebody sick. Like, I think Fancy just wants to say that Dee Dee wasn't a bad mom in any capacity, and I feel like no mom is perfect. Like all of us make mistakes, right? And mm -hmm. like no, I'm not going to make Dee Dee the perfect victim, but I'm certainly not going to make her the villain of her own demise. Like she, Gypsy did not have to do that. She could have left. The story that Gypsy has put out that she had no other options is false. Her mom had gout and diabetes. She couldn't even get to the bathroom on her own, apparently. And Gypsy was distributing her medication for her, apparently. So on top of that, if she was able to get the Greyhound tickets, then go and murder her mom, why didn't she just get the Greyhound tickets and get on the Greyhound and leave then? And not murder her mom. Why didn't she just go be with her boyfriend? Someone said Didi had a bad childhood and with ABUSC2, it was generational. It's generational trauma and it's general it's like passing down from one generation to the next, right? And that's what her siblings said is like, oh, Didi's just doing to her to Gypsy what my mom did to, to Dee Dee, right? That's what her siblings have said, okay? So I'm only going off publicly what her, her, her siblings have said. Now, I'm sure Fancy will say that I have this all wrong. I can only go off what was said by her siblings. Her brother and her sister have both said that. No, Gypsy's not being sued by her mom's family. She could have called her dad. She had friends that knew. She had so many opportunities where she could have just walked away. I mean, look at the two kids. They left in the middle of the night, went next door and called the police. Yep. But look I at think... me. I packed my bags and I left in the middle of the night when my grandma was in the hospital. It's not hard to get away. And I know that's a mean thing to say, but I'm not trying to be mean. You know what I mean? It's just not hard to get away from a situation like that without murdering somebody. The only time I can see myself murdering somebody in a situation like that is if it's literal life and death. And I mean, they're on top of me trying to murder me. I couldn't, I, I could never imagine doing that to somebody unless it was literal life or death in that moment. <laughs>